Hey everyone, Nick here, and this is going to be a real quick video about the updated Power Platform command line interface and specifically how it's updated for Power Apps portals. This will be something I will circle back to again in more details in, a, in an upcoming video, but for now I just really want to give you the highlights. So if you've been working with portals for a while and going beyond the point and click configuration and beginning to work with the liquid code and JavaScript and HTML, you've been probably working with code a little bit differently or in the following ways. The oldest way going back to the ADX Studio days is to add and update code directly in the portal management app. This is the dynamic CRM type app, that model driven app, and it's a the model driven app. It allows you to update that portal metadata directly, including web template code. It works pretty well, but it can be a little clunky and a little bit awkward to work with. So a more modern way is you can edit code directly on a web pages um, if you're working with the source code, or you can edit the web templates that are currently already exist directly in the Portal Studio. Now this works fairly well, but editing code in a browser for me is still a little bit of a foreign concept. Um, definitely doable, but there could be a better way. Now the one tool I've been using a lot the last few years is the Portal Code Editor in the XRM Toolbox. This allows you to load all the assets in a Windows application. And then from here, it's got things like highlighting. It has a little bit of IntelliSense and we can go in and work on our web template code directly that way. So as a developer, you probably wanna use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Um, you could do that before, but there's a lot of cut and pasting involved and there really wasn't any IntelliSense. However, now there is the Power Platform VS Code extension and we can install that directly from the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. So once we have Visual that installed, we can fire up Visual Studio Code and this is gonna be a lot of command line driven stuff. Now there are some community tools out there that will make this a little bit smoother, but if you're not used to command lines, then this is gonna be a little bit of a deep dive. First off, I'm just gonna type PAC. It's gonna bring up the Microsoft Power App CLI. It stands for Command Line Interface. And we're gonna see a list of those commands. Now the first thing we're gonna to need to do is connect to your particular environment. I'm just gonna start by typing PAC auth, and that's gonna give me a list of commands. Now notice I do get an error, but I really just wanna see the commands that I can run. So I'm just gonna type PAC auth list to get a list of the authentication profile stored on this particular machine. So here I'm just gonna type PAC auth select, and I'm gonna select the particular authentication profile I'm gonna use. Of course, we can set up other ones fairly easily just by following some of these commands. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is again, use the PAC, PAC portal and list, and that is gonna give me a list of all the website records on this particular environment. And then I'm just gonna copy that GUID. I'm gonna need that in a second. And then my next command is going to, we're going to download all the portal metadata to our local computer. So again, I'm just gonna type a PAC, PAP portal, and then download. I need to give it a path. And that path can be, this is a folder somewhere on your computer. I've set up a C drive where I have some of my projects here and I'm going to give this a brand new name to starter portal and that's fine. And then again, it's gonna, we need to designate the ID of the portal so it knows what website metadata. So I'm just gonna grab that and we're just gonna run that command. And then what it's gonna do, it's going to download all that portal metadata in the form of like XML and YML files. And there's a particular reason for this. Um, this way it can, we can begin to edit and work with this data directly on our machines using Visual Studio code. So now that I've downloaded that, I'm gonna open up this folder. Now we see that we have all these icons that represent the different portal assets and everything from advanced forms, basic forms, content snippets. Um, let's take a look at some web pages here. We can begin to expand out our web pages. Remember, web pages are content by language. Let's just take a look at some simple page copy here. We see some of the sample text that's there. Let's open up a different page. Let's open up that web copy here. And we can actually see some of the code that we may have entered just by dragging and dropping some components onto our page using the Portal Studio. We can take this a step further and we can begin to edit that code directly in VS Code. I'm just gonna add another div here. I'm not gonna give it a particular class name at this time. Just really wanna keep this demo quick and simple. And 
the cool thing here is I can actually begin to type in some liquid attributes and the IntelliSense will kick in. And so I don't have to memorize a lot of these commands. I know I'm, a, you know, I have to keep looking up sometimes. Okay, how did I do this before by looking at some other templates or going to Microsoft Docs? Here I can just type it in and it's just going to complete itself. Now it doesn't pull in the actual names of some of my own custom forms or basic forms or advanced forms, but at least we have this in the IntelliSense, which is pretty cool. Let's actually pop down here, take a look at the web templates. Same thing, instead of editing the web template directly in Portal Studio or in the Portal Management app, I can do the editing directly here and update that source code directly in VS Code. Now this is gonna be stored on my local machine. So once I'm done, I'm gonna go back to the terminal window. Here I'm gonna type in the command PAC PA portal upload dash P dot, which is the current directory. And we see here that it connected and it uploaded the data here and uploaded it back into my Power Apps portal metadata. And it just uploaded the files I changed. It's not gonna re-upload everything. So the benefit here is now that we've been able to download our portal metadata, edit it with the IntelliSense. So that is the first advantage. The other advantage is because it's in VS Code and because it's on our local drive, what we can do now is a series of Git commands or even tie this into Azure DevOps, depending on how you want to do ALM. And now we can begin to manage ALM with Power Apps portals using the command line interface tool. And this really adds those ALM capabilities that we've been looking for. And of course, once we have our portal metadata in source control, we can begin to compare, see if things have changed over time. Um, if something went wrong, we could always roll back in those types of things. So a lot of uh, interesting things coming. This is still in preview, um, so they are working on it, but definitely check it out if you've been working with portals. And if you're not really a developer still, there's a lot of advantages of using VS Code to work on your portal project. So. Uh, thanks a lot. Have fun. And I look forward to hearing about all the great work that you're doing creating portals.